very good morning to you all viewers welcome to it this is thursday and uh, my name is sharon kalimbula on the other chair of course is patrick soko and we are here to grind with you at least up until the hour of nine of course we will be zooming into some of the stories that made headlines we will be having a very very fruitful discussion with you so from the word go actually you can call us or text us and give us a comment on the uh, topic that we have this morning it's it's actually scrolling on your screens but there's, there's a whatsapp thing that that we brought about where, where's that thing yes we have that and uh, the, the number will be giving it out uh, to our dear viewers so that uh, they can get interacting with us and send us voice notes uh, you know technology is very advanced mm -hmm, so we have mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, if you cannot call directly you can you just send the, chains, of course yes you send us a, a voice note so then we interact that way Mm -hmm. Some of us who want to explain things, we don't like typing. Mm -hmm. I should be typing to say, Elijah, you are useless. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Stay I want time. it to be felt. <laughs> yes, so I will so. just use my voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so really, kind of if you want to make voice. a point heard, mm -hmm. if you want to emphasize on something, you can send us those voice notes. However, for now, though, let's look at the health corner and see what the doctors have for us. On the other side, we continue with the breakfast show as we also look at how the quacha is faring against the major convertibles. For now, let's look at what the doctors have brought. morning and welcome to your breakfast show and in particular the health segment. I'm Dr. Chelo Mwanza, a member of the Medical Women Association of Zambia and this health segment is proudly brought to you by the Medical Women Association of Zambia. So this week we're looking at the importance of under five clinics. We are looking at the various components and how these components actually help us in monitoring a child's growth. And so yesterday, we outlined the components. We looked at our baby and parent information. And today, we're going to look at um, growth monitoring. So from conception, an embryo is expected to grow and develop until a time when the baby is born, after which uh, the growth of this child is followed up and monitored at the under five clinic visits. And so growth can be measured in three ways. And um, this is monitoring the weight, the height, and the brain development. If a child is not developing well in any of these three components, it means there's a problem and um, you may need to see a doctor for that uh, particular problem that your child could have. So um, how do we monitor uh, growth in terms of weight? So as you take your child for the under five visits, you will probably be given this record and um, we have it out there in our clinics and so in particular each time every month you take your child for the visit the weight will be plotted on this particular chart so a child who's gaining adequate weight would expect them to be along this green line so if your child is gaining weight as it is required they'll be between this green line and the top red line so if your child starts to lose weight the scale will start going down and this is a danger sign it could mean that your child is not gaining adequate weight or they're actually losing weight it could be because they're not feeding as they're supposed to or maybe they've had an illness um, that's long-standing or maybe it's just a short illness that uh, could have made them lose weight if the child continues to lose weight even to get to this dotted line your child at this particular point could be in severe acute malnutrition and may need admission for treatment again on the other hand if your child gains excessive weight such that they go above this black line on top it means your child is has gained too much weight and would, we may need uh, to check could it be um, something wrong why, why they could be gaining so much weight or it could be just that maybe you are not giving the food as it is supposed to so this is 
one way we monitor a child's growth. The other way we monitor the growth is to look at um, the height of the child. So again, each time you go for the under five visit, we expect that your child's height will be measured and it will be plotted again on this chart. So if your child is within between the red the two red lines or along the green line it means your child is gaining the height as they are supposed to if your child um is not gaining as much height as they're supposed to let's say they're between this red line at the bottom and the black line it could mean that your child um could be short for their height because of a particular problem it could also be feeding problems or it could just be that it is runs in the family. Some children could be short from the beginning, but they do catch up later, especially around puberty. Again, if your child um, is gaining so much weight that ab above this red line, which is above the green line, it could be that your child is too tall for their age. Again, some peop some children are tall because generally in the family they are tall or others it could be because maybe they have excess hormones or they have another problem and so by monitoring by us plotting all this on this chart it helps us to see how well your child is growing now we've, now that we've looked at the height and the weight the other aspect that we monitor even as a child develops is the brain function so for for the body to function as it is supposed to the brain is supposed to have the correct size and be functioning the right way and so as your child is growing the certain things that we expect them to do at a particular age so as you take them for under five visits we're going to measure the head circumference so that um we measure we put it around the head we measure how well how big the head is uh, ideally of course when a baby is born the head is smaller but as they grow on the head also starts to grow and at every particular age we expect that the head circumference is um at the correct size so after we've measured that we're going also to look at what your child is able to do so if uh, you can see I mean, I, I know most of us parents out there have these under five cards. It's easy, you can follow, you know, you can see that in this first line, this is a child who's between two and four months. So we expect that a, two, a child between two and four months is able to lift their head, they're able to support their head, and also they're able to smile even as you talk to them, you know, as you smile at them, they smile back at you. Babies sometimes do smile from birth for whatever reason. They smile during their sleep. They smile even, uh, even when you haven't smiled at them. But the most important thing is that at about six weeks, we expect that when you smile at your child, uh, they smile back at you. And for us, that's a sign of growth. That's a sign of communicating, of communication between you and the child or the child to you. So and so again. At about four months to six months, we expect that your child starts to bubble. You know, they start making sounds. Um, and then also they're able to take objects to their mouths. And this is around the time when, you know, sometimes you might see teeth development. And um, yeah, and sometimes they tend to have diarrhea because of um, frequent, uh, frequently taking things into their mouth. And so... If, for instance, you gave a child who's two months old a toy, they may not be able to play with it because they are too young to play with a toy. But you gave, if you gave that toy to a child who's between four to six months, you'd expect that they'll be able to play with it, you know, they'll hold it, they'll take it to their mouth. To their mouth. For us, it's a sign of growth. It means the brain is developing as it is supposed to. And so we go on. If we look at a child who's between six to nine months, uh, they start to learn how to sit, uh, they're able to say mama, tata, you know. So it means they're growing and growing and so on and so forth. When you look at a child who's between 9 to 12 months, they start to learn how to walk, they start to pick up objects, they point at things 
and they're even able to imitate gestures so you know they can say bye when you when you wave at them and they wave back at you and so forth and so on so as you bring as you take your child for these under five visits we are able to help you stimulate your child with the appropriate type of play and even the toys to give so that this child's brain can develop as it is supposed to so today we've looked at three aspects which help us um, tell that this child is growing very well so we looked at how we how the weight is measured and plotted and the height and also the brain development thank you for joining us i'm dr chelo mwanza from the medical women association of zambia tomorrow we are going to look at nutrition and how well we need to feed our babies so that they can gain the adequate weight see you tomorrow thank you There you have it. Uh, that's an interesting topic uh, that we've been looking at pertaining to child health and the importance of taking your children to 405 uh, and um, make sure that you also do that as a couple as you take your children. Of course, actually, yeah, it, it, it works to your advantage mm -hmm. because you do it faster. You know, yes. clinic, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's, there's a lot that we need to do, Patrick. Yes, yes. There's a lot that we need to do as a country in order for us to attain gender equality. Because nowadays we've got women that work, but the excuse that these, um, these I'm not sure if I would call them nurses, like last time I mentioned, so sometimes I would give people that are not nurses to just weigh your child, put them on the scale, and indicate to say 3.5, 5 point whatever, mm -hmm. and then you go home. But in the actual sense, there's more that needs to be done when you go for under five clinic. Mm -hmm. However, when you go as a couple, even if you're at the far end of the, the queue, queue they bring you in front. Yes, I had this privilege. Okay, like, child. are you serious? Nowadays, we've got women even, that work. Even for antenatal visits. You know? For antenatal visits. Exactly. Um, if you Somebody who goes with your husband, yeah. you, you will be attended to quickly, mm -hmm. and they, you, they'll allow you to go. You actually spend 30 minutes. You won't have to spend the whole day, like, the whole morning, you know, going through all those sessions. So, but then, Patrick, so, mm -hmm. so, so, so but you know what, Sharon? Uh, you women, you wake. You may wake up, yeah. but you women are also uh, 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 fine with time. You do, you know how to manage your time very well, and you'd find men uh, because they, with that um, inclination towards uh, cultural beliefs and exactly, the they say, it's ah, just cultural beliefs. It's just cultural beliefs altogether. Uh -huh. because but, uh, really. but these people would want you to go there because you, no wonder. For instance, we say that uh, there's a high prevalence of HIV among women compared to men. Right? Mm -hmm. The issue, Sharon, is about uh, more women are tested than men. Yes, yes. So you'd find that uh, men always shun go visit in the health center. But mm -hmm. if you go as a couple, Sharon, you have a chance for cancel, couple counseling where they will, buy, they will make sure to say, they test you, they test you. So that they make sure they advise you correctly if um, you need, uh, if one is infected or not, so that you can uh, be put on uh, uh, prevention of mother to child mm -hmm. uh, uh, arrangement. So, but you'd find that uh, other men will just, ah, just go, I can't manage. But I'm busy. You, yeah, so but now now we're seeing uh, the millennials uh, and these likes of uh, Elijah's. They're trying to change the narrative, Sharon. They try to be part and parcel, mm -hmm. saying, okay, no, I'm going to uh, make sure I'm with and my... And claiming uh, for paternity. I think, I think paternity that this, yes, I there's, there's, they just there's, want there's to, one guy who's also keen about that. They just want the paternity, uh, the paternity leave. leave. You are keen mm -hmm. on it, yeah. not even one guy. <laughs> You're I, so not the one upstairs. Oh, please, Patrick. <laughs> the one upstairs is even worse. <laughs> That's a topic for another day. No one upstairs is even a topic for another day. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. These people but, want but, but, but it's important to get in paternity. Uh, for paternity, whereby you also, um, for example, like you said, women now nowadays wake. Yes. So, so uh, on that particular day, you may be given that space to attend to your children. Mm. So okay, let me also take and them to myself. And your wife goes to work. Let know? me bath them myself. You know, yeah, it's no, important no. to to have such values because they go a long way in uh, nurturing a family and uh, promoting good family values. Indeed, Patrick, let's look at how the quarter is faring this morning. 
so that we know where to go when we want to change those dollars, pounds, and other currencies. However, the British pound is uh, buying at 17 quarter 64 ngwe and selling at 17 quarter 98 ngwe. The United States dollars is at 15 quacha 55 ngwe and selling at 15 quacha 86 ngwe. The euro is at 15 quacha 41 ngwe and selling at 15 quacha 71 ngwe. While the South African rand is at 0 0.88 ngwe and selling at 0 0.90 ngwe. Those are your money markets as of today, the 22nd of September 2022. Remember that exchange rates mm -hmm. vary from one financial institution to another. Yes, uh, and as well as from one bureau to the other. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, we just, it has been trading within the same range, Sharon. No, much, no major changes. No major changes, but ka, uh, ka, ka rand, Kaliko Rather, it's been, psh, 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 yeah. you know. But uh, we, 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 we are getting stronger yes. by the day as, as the quarter currency. And uh, the topic of discussion this morning is the 2023 budget expectations and the implementation of social funding on sectors such as education and health. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this. This can be Patrick uh, um, during the one year ad um, administration of the UPND. There's been a lot of uh, uh, activity in the health sector. No medicines, no drugs, no what. But these are important sectors mm -hmm. that we are budgeted for. Mm -hmm. And education as well. Yes. Uh, other people are still complaining of not fully receiving mm -hmm. these uh, fundings, of course, through CDF. So what is your take as a viewer out there? Next week, the Minister of Finance, Dr. Stumbekom Sokotwani, will be presenting the 2023 national budget. Of course, we still have about three months to exhaust 2022 national budget. But I mean, if we've spent eight months without achieving much, what is three months in terms of financial capacity? Yeah, what so do we yeah. expect? So we need to get views from mm -hmm. people like Reverend Mandoli, as well as uh, our <laughs> frequent caller from Livingstone. From Livingstone. So that we get to know their perspective regarding what they would want to see in the 2023 national budget. But uh, I, I think for me, the budget, when we have been interacting with institutions like the JCTR, mm -hmm. the budget should be a, a, a manifestation of what people want to see. Exactly. But not the other way around. Yeah. But you see uh, leaders, successive governments, have been imposing budgets on the on people. people. So you, our, uh, our dear viewers, you can suggest what you want uh, to see in the 2023 what you expect national to see. budget. Obviously, the draft has already been done. Everything mm -hmm. is done. But what you want to, what, what you expect, have you, uh, have you made submissions? If you haven't made submissions, okay, why did you make submissions? Because according to, to, to government, people are mandated to give submissions of what they want to see yes. in the budget. So the fact that next week, like 10 days from now or less than that, the budget mm. will be presented. That means it's already been done. It's already been compiled. So, yeah, they are still so doing some stuff. What do you though, think you know, the should, the should, contain, should be mm -hmm. contained in the budget? I think should be the question. What should be the contents? Mm -hmm. or especially on social spending, education, and health. And uh, do we want to the see the workers there? You know, mm -hmm. the complaint has been that they pay a lot uh, to ZRA mm -hmm. uh, through the the pairs UN. Mm -hmm. uh, though the threshold was adjusted upward, but still more. Um, most people are uh, within that uh, band, yes, band with exactly. it. And uh, if you look at that, most civil servants and uh, other the workers civil servants. Who pay, who pay <laughs> You are going to be quoted wrongly. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, the, the civil servants, uh, Sharon, or the public work, service workers, mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they, they pay more taxes. We pay more taxes. By the time you realize, we are going to something but but the sectors that are really really generating enough revenue that has been uh, the concerns for me for me, most of the people we have interacted with Sharon on the especially pertaining to the mining sector they feel the mining sector is not paying enough taxes considering mm -hmm. what they are getting from uh, our our grounds and uh, this has been a concern for a while but what are they are, are they going to afford the current uh, uh, tax size or are they going to change or mm -hmm. what is do you think should they should implement on t when it comes to uh, tax. Uh, um, probably, you know, they say the, uh, on, that, on that aspect of tax about, you know, if even if the amount is 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 this, if someone is paying it frequently, mm -hmm. it's easier to ensure compliance. But sometimes exactly. you find that taxes also that are too much. People. Yes, people Whatever. start evading. 
Yes. Because we'll start evading, we'll start mm -hmm. bringing in things uh, using smuggled ways uh, just to avoid paying those huge taxes. However, Patrick, let's look at one of the stories that we were in yesterday where four aggrieved fertilizer suppliers have sued the Zambia Public Procurement Authority, ZPPA, and the Ministry of Agriculture in Lusaka High Court over the duo's decision to, cha to cancel a tender it awarded to them for supplying and delivery of compound D and urea fertilizer for the 2022-2023 farming season. Evergreen Fertilizer Limited, Stoughton Investment Limited, Summer Agro Investment Limited, and Kangchak Investment Limited have commenced judicial review against the duo seeking a declaration that the state decisions are illegal and unreasonable. The four are also seeking an order of prohibition to restrain the procurement committee and the Ministry of Agriculture and proceedings with a non-competitive direct bidding procedure. This is what you were talking about, Patrick, yesterday, mm -hmm. where uh, the Ministry of, of Agriculture actually cancelled all the, yes. the tenders. That, but <sighs> in one day, Patrick, really, mm. I, I, I don't understand this. You, you remember yesterday I was saying that, you know, this issue of saying transparency, transparency, sometimes these are just fake things. Uh, yeah, sometimes you, you see. You, you give but people so, a tender but, uh, and then you withdraw. But what, so you mean you didn't do a due diligence? Mm. You give you people to start supplying, they then start making contacts, then you withdraw. This reminds me of the issue of Maureen Kando. We shouldn't go there. But it reminds me of it. Let's look at this story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. In a twist of event, four aggrieved fertilizer suppliers whose tender was cancelled by the Zambia Public Procurement Authority, ZPPA, have rushed to the Lusaka High Court seeking a declaration that the said decision is illegal and unreasonable. Few days ago, the ZPPA cancelled the fertilizer tender which was recently awarded by the Ministry of Agriculture to Evergreen Fertilizer Limited. Seton Investment Limited, Samara Agro Investment Limited, and Corncake Investment Limited after the process was plotted. The four who have commenced judicial review proceedings against ZPPA and the Ministry of Agriculture wants the court to quash the decision by the Procurement Committee, the Ministry of Agriculture, for terminating a tender granted to them to supply delivery warehousing and distributing of 259,000 992 metric tons of compound D fertilizer for the 2022-2023 farming season and has now embarked on a limited bidding or direct bidding procedure involving the unsuccessful bidders that applied the notice of the best evaluated bidders. They have submitted before court that in June 2022, the Minister of Agriculture advertised and called for eligible bidders through an open national bidding process for the supply and delivery of compound D fertilizer for the 2022 and 2023 farming season. And on the 19th of August 2022, the Ministry of Agriculture indicated that they won the said tender. states that on the 12th of September 2022, the defendants cancelled the said tender. They state that the decision of the Appeals Committee of the ZPPA Public procurement principles are set out in Regulation 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, and 15, as the appeal was determined on issues not raised by unsuccessful bidders and was heard without according them an opportunity to be heard before the consolation, despite being the best evaluated bidders. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamne TV News. The alleged corruption case involving former Defence Minister Geoffrey Mwamba has been adjourned to a further date after his defence lawyers requested from the court that the accused be given a time off. Lead Defence Counsel Bonaventure Mtale has submitted that the outspoken opposition politician, Mr Mwamba, is a hypertension patient and needs to attend to his condition before it worsens. This application was made after the state made their own application that the matter be adjourned to Friday, as the witnesses they had lined up this morning, the 21st of September 2022, were all done with their testimonies. Earlier, a state witness from Investrust Bank testified how she accompanied a supervisor at the Joint Investigation Team in March 2022, following summons they received 
from the investigative wings who wanted to acquire specific information. Tisha Mwema, a treasury at Investrust, has told the Lusaka's Magistrate Court under the Specialized Economic Financial Crimes Court that the information the investigation team were inquiring was in relation to a payment that was made in October 2020, amounting to 631,986 United States dollars. In this case, Mr. Mwemba of the Opposition Patriotic Front is facing eight counts of conflict of interest, one count of money laundering, and 15 counts of possession of property suspected to be proceeds of crime, charges which he has denied before Magistrate Stanford in Gobola. Explaining to the court, the witness further testified that among other information she provided to the investigation team was that in October 2020, her colleagues in payment had circulated an inward payment which they had received, adding that thereafter she made a call to their client, Mr. Mwamba, inquiring on the said payment if he was converting any part of it to Kwacha, adding that the accused later sent instruction via WhatsApp indicating that the monies received should be debited to Jamie's Motorways account and should be sent out to North Sweat in South Africa. However, in her cross-examination, Ms. Mwima explained that there was no suspicion criminal element on where the money was coming from and that the bank did not face any criminality with the accused adding that the said transactions were legitimate. According to the charges the Anti-Corruption Commission have slapped the accused with, it is alleged from the first to the eighth count during the time he was Defense Minister failed to disclose interest in writing in relation to eight contracts for the supply of shelter tents for the Zambia Army valued at more than one million United States dollars, military regalia valued at more than one million kwacha, and specialized watermanship equipment for the Zambia Army valued at more than four million kwacha, which were awarded to Kozon Global Limited and that the transaction affected the Minister of Defense, among other charges. The matter comes up in October 2022. Miriam Kaimba, reporting for Kamni TV News. For aggrieved fertilizer suppliers, sues the public procurement. Mm. Patrick, this conversation, we, we started it yesterday, and, and uh, yesterday, Wednesday, the Minister of Agriculture, Mtolo Piri, uh, flagged off the distribution of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are part of the people that we are uh, given to distribute fertilizer, and the tender was cancelled, and uh, they found one. I'm not sure if it's two or three. For me, you uh, know? Yeah, you know since the month, they, I, I remember that they, they aggrieved the uh, companies have taken uh, a legal action because Business. that, 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 yes, that will, will, will give them a leeway to justify themselves because, you know, you cannot implicate people into corruption issues and damage their reputation and then off you move on. Off you move so on. let's see how that issue is handled. But on the other perspective for me, I think um, uh, uh, besides the issues that are before the court, now talking about uh, external issues, Mm -hmm. The external issues that uh, we are looking at direct bidding mm -hmm. and uh, competitive bidding. Mm -hmm. uh, Sharon, I think for me, all the time, I'd rather go for competitive bidding because uh, that is more tr transparent and it provides an opportunity to check the price uh, ranges for whichever uh, supplier is uh, on board because it gives you to say, okay, uh, company A, company B, company C. Company A has this price, company C has this price. Who is competitive here? Whom can we use? Then you, you settle for one. And then sometimes uh, company A, A may not supply everything. So you may also need to uh, also utilize other companies. So what you do is that you give them contracts according to the uh, scale and size. You can utilize all of them. But they also the idea is that also it's about job creation. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot make sure that you just satisfy one supplier. You also have to supply other companies because they equally have have to sustain their workers exactly. so all those aspects you need to look at them the direct bidding arrangement how sincere am i that uh, i'm not settling for you sharon because i know you exactly because yeah uh, sharon exactly. i know i know sharon personally and sharon may give me a kickback no, that how, you, uh, how, uh, how I'll I'll for something all those things yes because mm. something mm. so because sharon i know that if i give uh, the other person they won't give me anything in return but I'm giving Sharon because there's my 10% uh, 
uh, cut there. Mm-hmm. How do we know all those things? That's why I think the direct bidding arrangement is um, is not good. And we saw it, and uh, we saw issues of uh, re- reviewing the Procurement Act. I think we should be having a, a different Procurement Act, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't think it is addressing issues that we have been concerned about as a country. I think uh, uh, competitive uh, and competitive bidding should not be should not be encouraged, should not be entertained. For me, I don't. And uh, I think we can still use it because the law provides for that. People still use it to to conduct regalities. Exactly. You understand? Yeah, like uh, the the patriotic front um, leader of the opposition, Patrick Mm -hmm. Mr. Mundubile, last week he mentioned and was very categorical and said the more reason why government is withdrawing these tenders that have been given to these four people is because they want to single source. Mm-hmm. And if they want to single source, it's a recipe for corruption. Yes. And for you the, know? they had to wait. Who knows? Maybe in the company, you have a much stage. You know? So, and for me... Maybe the, the, the money is circulating the in themselves. The whole idea of waiting up to the last minute, I'm not comfortable with No. It. Because no. we know that we need to supply, we need to procure fertilizer for farmers. Do we have to wait up to September, October? For me, it is not necessary. These tender procedures would have been done probably in June or, or, or May. That's what they are done. Then in May, they would have been done in May. Then we discover irregularities, we change. Exactly. We can't be changing at the last minute. In this the last minute, just obviously, say this is a justification. Bid. This is a justification that government has to say, no, we need to start supplying these uh, farming inputs to the farmers before the rain start and stuff. So we need to urgently look for somebody who is going to supply. But then mm-hmm. again, we need to follow the right procedure. If at all we are promoting transparency, as they say, though for me, really, I'm quite yeah. skeptical with the yeah. issue of transparency. Because, because I, I, I also remember, there's Shana, nothing transparent about this. When we were talking about uh, this direct bidding, I remember I used to pursue some stories under the previous administration on the construction sector. The local companies, uh, the Small and uh, Medium Scale Contractors Association of Zambia, that was led by Mr. Mutari and Pepo. Mm-hmm. He used to complain uh, about uh, issues pertaining to lack of uh, b- contracts uh, for Zambians uh, or Zambian owned firms. But uh, we saw the other foreign firms dominating the construction sector. So when I was asking, they said, no, they usually go for direct bidding. And uh, if it's a direct bidding arrangement, there's nothing we can do. So, and the law provides for that. But, but, but what was that doing at, in, the, in the long run? It was affecting the local, uh, the local construction companies, and that yeah, tends to uh, also affect the job creation agenda for, mm-hmm. for the, the locals, mm-hmm. because they, they have no business. But again, we'll, we'll be going the same route. We know that we needed to do this. We should have done the right things. There's no way to, to wait up to the last minute to say, no, the contracts were dubiously awarded. No, later. I think later on. Mm. For me, I think you need to be proactive and uh, make sure that if you discover irregularities there and then, you, you, you re-advertise so that people can apply fresh, uh, freshly, so that you can still settle for the right bidders, and as opposed to the aspect of direct bidding. For me, the direct bidding arrangement tends to further one company. It's a risk of corruption. And and just look at one of the stories yeah. that you have there. So one of the stories, Sharon, is an interesting story pertaining to the COVID-19 pandemic, as mm-hmm. you already know that uh, now uh, measures we are... Uh, we are we are at least uh, the restrictions we are lifted, most of them. Uh, so we look at uh, some of the youths in Nusaka who had taken advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic by engaging in business of selling masks have fallen on a hard times following the lifting of wearing of face masks. And uh, last month, uh, Minister of, of Health, Asuvia Masevo, announced the lifting of uh, wearing of masks in the, 2020, in the 22 districts that have attained above 70% vaccination coverage. In random interviews, some youths around the central business district, the CBD, who are usually stationed at shopping malls and bus stations, say they have started selling other commodities after government lifted the, the mandatory wearing of face masks. To have your joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. know, when I was out, <laughs> you we were entering a mall, I think uh, one of the, uh, at what the mall, mm-hmm. and we were entering one of these chain stores. Mm-hmm. And then twice I life and I said, mm, I can't believe the way we're entering free like this. I saw that Those video. People. I saw that video <laughs> of, uh, of uh, one man who was getting with a mask and get getting inside, comes <laughs> out. <laughs> and that he, he wants to just the, the, the security man to attend to him. <laughs> gets in, comes in, that's and it. gets the mask, he throws down, steps on it, steps on it, 
<laughs> when he gets in, you get it. Those things really stress us, and you know, it made feel. You know, th these people that were like the security personnel for these uh, mm -hmm. chain stores, and they really felt important that period. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mary, but I couldn't mask. Mami, when you, even if you yeah. take the mask, you just try if to look at them. Oh, we saw you say, but they will say no. But you, because until, they are until, selling. And you remove your last five kwacha. You what? Uh, and you buy them. <laughs> and, 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 and one of these uh, fast food uh, stores in the country, the red ones, they would actually not save you. Ozanga and Amushop. But when you just reach the till, they will actually look at you queuing up. When you reach the two, they say we can't save you because you don't have a mask. Ah oh, man, the way I want to do those things to them. Ah, let's look at this story. <laughs> at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, some enterprising minds took advantage of the situation by making business sense out of a global disaster. One of the COVID-19 golden rule of masking up saw an influx of youths besiege the central business district by targeting public places such as shopping malls and bus stops. Armed with bags of masks, the men and women were daily cashing in by selling masks at five quarter each. It was only a little later that a mask would fetch for three quarter. The COVID-19 masks vendors had a thriving business as government made it mandatory for citizens to wear masks to avoid the spread of the dreaded pandemic. Not anymore. Business is now slow for the COVID-19 masks vendors. In particular, are two youths found at Southgate Mall near Kolima Tower. Soon after the lifting of wearing of masks, business has been slow for these two youths and others. They are to apply innovation, lest they starve their families by incorporating other commodities in their businesses. So so, Karika Paga Kama and Kalamo fifth. So, in a boy, a kumbu, your maning. Yeah, my men now survive. That's why in Agula go to my sweet sea. Pamela Pajan is a good sabot to my mask, so it's to Nankara called the breast fish. Yeah, Karibanashta Bani, my mask. To Vala, my mask in public, city mandatory. So I am many of to want to respond to once. I am many to announce. Ah, but you go, sir. You go, sir. Chila boss. Mhm. See, I am not joke. See, I am going to go to the toilet. Uh huh. So I am going to go to the toilet. Um. Kudala, I am going to go to the toilet. There is a series of people who are going to go to the toilet. Mhm. I am going to go to the toilet. There is a series of people who are going to go to the toilet. One is a driver and the other is an occupational safety, health, environmental certificate holder. But they had to resort to selling masks because of lack of jobs in their respective fields. Okay. See one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I drive the So I'm and So I'm in a certificate of occupation and safety. So I'm in a It is encouraging to see a cadre of youths engaging in genuine toil, irrespective of their station in life. Surely, if they keep working hard, one day they will be rewarded with sustainable sources of income. Tito Kalama, Kamnet News. For immediate coverage of any breaking or latest news in Zambia and around the world on Kamnet Television, call the numbers on your screen. Television, bringing to your screens fair news, impartial news, credible and reliable news all the time. Get the whole truth on Camnet World News.
television, not just another channel. Together, together, together we fight for just climate action. Together as one, super fantastic and ocean. Change is a problem with a solution. So stop cutting down those trees if you want the future generations to breathe. Climate change, no lie, chilamo. This a chile, the foot to chica pishamo. So won't say send it to one belly palm on a vana, but a sell a safe to come. Yeah, so no guy chichalo, we are kids. Nigga just who wanna have a mass in this and my guess. Mind your why my experiment in no child my test. My grass, if you choose if you did what is a much. No monopoly, monopoly. The ground is infected boy monopoly. Solution up a man. Let's work together. Let's raise our voices. Let's work together. Let's change the beacons with you. Let's work together. Let's work together. Let's change beacons with you. You and me. You and me. river, mountain, valley, and tree. My voice is an echo of what the ground cries. Deforestation, destruction, devoid due definition. People physically plundering planet. Pilfering practices producing poisonous pollutants. The charcoal cookers chalk continuity. While these sweet, sustainable energy synergies titillate theatrical tender thoughts. Fund, promote, raise awareness for just climate action.
a little spice. Better. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, I, 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 interestingly, we've been. Uh, uh, we, had a, we had a good break uh, with Mr. Maluntu, yes, uh, giving indeed. us a song on uh, climate change, uh, Sharon. It's quite an interesting song uh, on climate <laughs> change, uh, where we see that uh, climate change continues to affect us uh, as a country. Zambia is not spared. We're seeing unpredictable weather patterns in terms of uh, rains as well as uh, um, heat waves. We are seeing uh, floods uh, in our society and uh, this has been affecting us and uh, we just hope that uh, you that's the message in the song is loud and clear you managed to also get it and uh, see how we can embrace uh, uh, climate change when we're talking about climate change we look at climate adaptation and mm -hmm. uh, mitigation so when we look at uh, adaptation and mitigation as a country we just need to make sure that uh, we are proactive addressing climate change is not an overnight issue no. it requires stakeholder cooperation it, it's, uh, it requires your participation as communities. You have to own the projects. You have to get involved as, uh, as, as citizens. And that's the only way we are going to address uh, climate change. Indeed, Patrick, it's here to stay with us. It's, it's something mm -hmm. that I feel cannot be completely stopped, but mm -hmm. it can be reduced in the way it happens. Yes. And uh, the more reason why it you, you mentioned really it needs stakeholder collaboration and obviously the more reason why this administration so it fits to come up with a dedicated ministry to look at um, issues to do with climate change that is the Ministry of Green Economy and the minister has traveled across the globe to just see how best we can uh, uh, learn more mm -hmm. on how we can mitigate climate change effects mm -hmm. and actually prevent it from becoming so widespread in a short period of time obviously it's here to stay we mm -hmm. just need to look at adaptation measures and how we can slow the pace at which uh, we, we, it, 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 it grows mm -hmm. and uh, by, by putting up measures such as replanting of trees mm -hmm. the usage of other, other, other alternatives and ensure that we are on the right course as, as, as a country. Otherwise, it's here to stay. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's one of the stubborn things that we have to fight as a country. Yes, it is here to stay. So let's always uh, see how we can adapt uh, to it. Mm -hmm. Also, let's also zoom in uh, the other two stories, Sharon. Now, I'll take on one where the Ministry of Home Affairs and Internal Security has uh, launched the Advisory Committee on the Prerogative of Mercy guidelines to direct them when recommendation when recommend, making recommendations to the president regarding the petitions made by eligible inmates home affairs minister jack Mimbo says the core mandate of the advisory committee is to make recommendations to the president on the course of action regarding persons convicted of offenses by the courts or a court martial indeed patrick and uh, one of the stories that i have from me here is the chinese ambassador to zambia has warned that Chinese, the Chinese embassy will not shield any Chinese company or national getting involved in illegal activities while in Zambia. The Chinese envoy says that there seems to be more negative news about China's companies because of the large proportion of China's investment in Zambia. The envoy says the Chinese government will communicate with Chinese companies regularly, requesting them to follow Zambian laws, produce safety, respect local staff and do business with honesty let's look at these stories the minister of home affairs and internal security jack mimu has launched the advisory committee on prerogative of mercy guidelines the establishment of the advisory committee is pursuant to article 96 of the constitution of zambia and consists of members appointed by the president in accordance with article 96 of the constitution of zambia prior to the formulation of the guidelines the advisory committee did have procedures to direct them when making recommendations to the president regarding petitions made by eligible inmates in attendance was also the Deputy Commissioner Director, Zambia Correction Service. As they will guide the deliberations of the committee, they also cultivate a sense of accountability and improve transparency of the committee. Meanwhile, the Minister of Home Affairs has described the launch as a milestone and commended the Technical Committee for the hard work. Mandate is to make recommendations to His Excellency 
the president on the course of action to be taken regarding persons convicted of offenses by courts of, of law or a court martial. The Once followed, the guidelines will enhance credibility in the manner each case will be treated and give the president enough insight to allow him exercise his powers and objectivity. The guidelines have been made and are being provided with the standard processes and procedures for the committee to follow when making recommendations to His Excellency the President for the pardon of inmates. Additionally, the guidelines also establishes clearly the rules and the regulations pertaining to the operations of the appointed advisory committee members and the need to adhere to them. As you may be aware, the President is passionate about the welfare of inmates serving in correctional facilities and centers throughout the country. You have seen from time to time the President talking about how we have to ensure that uh, we lessen the burden of incarceration and overcrowding in correctional centers and facilities and make the stay of inmates bearable and humane. The minister is hopeful that the guidelines will cultivate a sense of accountability and improve transparency of the advisory committee as they make recommendations to the president. It is my sincere hope that these guidelines will, will cultivate a sense of accountability and improve transparency of the advisory committee as they make recommendations to His Excellency the President. The development of these guidelines is therefore a milestone in as far as making objective recommendations is concerned. He further notes that if inmates are well supported by the general public, they will significantly contribute to the social economic development of the country. Tito Kalama, Kamnet News. Hardly a month passes by without a report of a Chinese national being entangled in labor dispute, a situation that has left many wondering why such cases have continued to repeat themselves at the watch of the authorities. Chinese ambassador to Zambia, Dun Xiao, however, says there seems to be more negative news about Chinese companies because of the large proportion of Chinese investment into Zambia. The ambassador who spoke at the press briefing in Lusaka ahead of the China Zambia Trade and Investment Forum, which will take place from the 28th of September to the 29th of September 2022 has since warned that the Chinese embassy will not shield any Chinese company or national who behaves illegally while in Zambia. There seems to be negative news about Chinese companies because of the large proportion of China's investments. We want to take three approaches to solve the problem. First, upskill the quality investment and make the pie bigger. Second, the Chinese government and I will communicate with Chinese companies regularly, requesting them to follow Chinese law and Zambia laws. Third, the embassy will not shield any Chinese company or national who will behaves illegally. The ambassador further says the forum will provide an opportunity for Zambia and China to cement its relationship and says the debt situation should not store China-Zambia bilateral cooperation. The debt issue should not store China-Zambia bilateral cooperation. The essence of the debt problem is to get initial capital for development and the key to solve the debt problem is development, which demands investment and economic increase. Meanwhile, Acting Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, Elias Mubanga, has emphasized the need for skill transfer even as investors come into Zambia. It is our firm belief that domestic and foreign direct investment can bring into the country the much-needed capital 
tech knowledge and transfer of skills. That's very important. Yes, we want to make sure that our Zambian business community get involved. But we are encouraging as government that we need to partner. Partnership is key to receive the transfer of technology. And the Zambia Development Agency ZDA Acting Director General, who was represented by Jessica Chembo, says the Zambia-China Expo will help strengthen the bilateral agreement that exists between the two countries. This event are being held today there to provide a valuable platform for our potential Zambian and Chinese business community to optimize available opportunities in trade and investment in order to contribute to the economic development of both Zambia and China. Nearly 200 Chinese enterprises have officially signed up for the forum and the embassy has also invited about 10 Chinese Fortune 500 enterprises such as BYD, Xinjiang Mining and CMOC to attend the forum online. Prudence Chota reporting for TV News. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, those are the two stories we were zooming in. Uh, one pertaining to the Chinese ambassador expressing concern uh, pertaining to coverage of uh, Chinese uh, nationals' uh, negative news. Yeah, uh, always and, uh, covered for the wrong reasons. Yeah, for the wrong reasons, not the good reasons. Always. Yeah, yeah, this is, that story, Sharon. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw oh, another story from the Minister of uh, Home Affairs and Internal Security, Mr. Jack Mwimbu, where they have launched um, a program uh, on uh, the uh, a committee on the prerogative of mercy that makes recommendations to the president regarding uh, uh, petitions that are made by uh, the inmates. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are quite two interesting stories. Now, picking on the story uh, on involving the Chinese ambassador, uh, this is because uh, we've seen that even here at County TV, we have done quite a number of mm -hmm. stories uh, pertaining to the Chinese investors. And uh, the stories, usually most of them are usually on the negative. On the negative side. This is because we find workers uh, complaining or these employer not following laid down procedure when it comes to the labor laws that it exist was, in Zambia. It was worse last year during mm -hmm. the, the PF where we had Joyce known there as the Minister of Labor. She would actually say, you'll be fired. So you see. Those we want are you the, to speak for us as a minister. And we had a one where this uh, Chinese ambassador, Chinese, sorry, Chinese, Chinese uh, investor, was uh, actually in confrontation with the Ministry of Labor. They had mm -hmm. to source the intervention of the police mm -hmm. to, uh, to explain to him, to say, you need to allow us entry, you need to make sure that we allow us to inspect mm -hmm. because we are government officials and we are also here to do our job. Mm -hmm. But the same Chinese man, Sharon, seemed to be... In Very world. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and whatever you're saying, it's like, what are these on? Said they're making, what noise are they making? You get it? Yeah. They're making, just making noise. Can they go already? But uh, I continue with working, making fake things. Yes, so all those <laughs> things. Yeah, but uh, the Chinese ambassador also was categorical during that uh, stakeholder meeting ahead of uh, this expo that will be hosted uh, between the two countries, uh, where I said Chinese nationals getting involved in illegalities will not be sued. But we just hope that uh, this commitment will be upheld because we have a number of reports pertaining illegalities involving Chinese nationals Indeed. land. Uh, in, uh, in the mining, in the white sector, name it. We have seen uh, all those issues em emerging uh, there in the public domain. We just hope that uh, the ambassador will uphold uh, the Chinese government's position pertaining to that. He also mentioned the aspect of date, that uh, date won't be a, a, a restraining issue on the two countries because, because at the end of the day, countries need, need to acquire date in order to achieve certain uh, developmental targets and uh, that uh, they remain uh, committed to assisting Zambia. Just uh, uh, hoping that uh, that uh, commitment will also follow uh, through. We understand that Zambia, Zambia, China relations, they, these countries have been uh, uh, in good terms uh, for a long time in terms of uh, bilateral relations. Um, so we just hope that uh, they will continue to cement those uh, uh, relations now that we have the United Party for National Development Administration they will still find a common ground to ensure that the relations are enhanced just like it was in the past. Indeed, Patrick, quite well elaborated there. You sound like a Chinese ambassador to, 
to, to Zambia. Oh, oh. <laughs> Zambia's representative to China, actually. <laughs> Maybe that's where you're heading anyway. You sound very knowledgeable about these things. So, yeah. Uh -huh. As we wind up, Patrick. Yes, as we wind up, we take a look at, uh, we zoomed to quite a number of stories, and uh, we're also looking at uh, the topic of discussion, the expectations on the national budget. We also uh, looked at uh, the health matters. We also looked at uh, the aspect of how the Kwacha is performing against the other major convertible currencies. And uh, just now, Sharon, it's that time when it will excuse the screens until we, next week when we come with another interesting segment of uh, the cabinet uh, breakfast uh, wednesday thursday edition where we focus on governance politics and policy indeed thank you so much for watching good morning